The Thieves Guild by Jake Kerr. Episode 36. Teal's Message. Things went perfectly, and after an hour, Mela found herself guarding the entrance to Harvest House. The moment the other guard passed around the corner and out of sight as he headed for the rear of the building, Mela walked up to the entrance and entered the courtyard. There was a single guard in the courtyard, and Mela noticed several guards on the wall. They were obviously familiar with Teal, however, and they didn't give Mela a second glance as she walked up to the main doors. She had a moment of panic, thinking that they may have been locked, but they weren't, and Mela entered without issue. As soon as she entered, Mela quickly scanned the entryway. There were two guards at the base of the staircase, and two more standing guard over the entrance, one of whom was marching toward her. What are you doing? Why aren't you at your post? The guard was in full armour, and Mela couldn't see his face. I have an important message for the Guildmaster. Tim sent me. The guard didn't have his hand on the pommel of his sword, which was a good sign, but his stance was confrontational as he looked Mela up and down. Why isn't he delivering the message himself? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? He seemed to be in a bad mood, mentioning something about Deputy Esma being off in the outer fields while Tim had to run around chasing enemies. Mela figured the details would lend credence to her story, but they were a risk. She wasn't sure that Esma was actually at the outer fields, and she wasn't sure that Tim had as much power as she had assessed. To her relief, the guard nodded. What is the message? He said I was to repeat it to no one but the Guildmaster. Mela lowered her voice and glanced over at the guards near the steps. The word spy was used. The guards stared at Mela for an uncomfortably long time, but then yelled out to the guards at the steps, Let her through. She has a message for the Guildmaster. Mela bowed her head to the guard, turned and walked briskly up the steps to the second floor. She had passed the first two obstacles, getting into Harvest House at night and getting past the first floor guards. There were another four guards on the landing of the second floor. Despite the chaotic nature of the Harvest Guild guards' living arrangements, Mela had to admit that the guild defences were rather strong and the guards disciplined. Of course, it helped that Harvest House appeared to have only a single point of entry, making limited defences all that was required. As on the first floor, a single guard approached. Mela was tempted to repeat her story and just walk right up the stairs to Polo's quarters, but she knew that while it may have worked on the first floor guards, it wouldn't work with the guards on the third floor. They were Polo's personal attachment and were too savvy to allow a low-level guard to just walk in to see the guildmaster while he was under threat of assassination. So she spun a new story. What's your business here, Teal? Damn. He knows Teal, Mela thought. Lowering her voice to a whisper, which Mela hoped would both disguise her voice and lend it more gravitas, she replied, I'm here to provide a message to one of the guards in the guild hall and to replace him on duty. Mela lowered her head. The guard stepped forward. Why? What is going on? Is it Richard? Yes, it is Richard. There has been a tragedy with his family. I am to deliver the message and take his place. By the gods, it isn't his daughter, is it? She's the sweetest thing. I saw her a fortnight ago playing in the fields. The guard was visibly distressed and had completely given up any thought of questioning Mela's motives. I fear it is. She is deathly ill. There is talk she won't make it through the night. The news clearly stunned the guard. Gods, no. That is such horrible news. The guard stood up straight. Such a message should be delivered by a friend. I will deliver the news. The guard said emphatically, turning to the door to the hall. As you wish, but I am to take his place guarding the hall. Of course, follow me. The guard started walking to the door, but then stopped and turned to face Mela. Thank you, Teal. I know you and Richard have had... difficulties. Nodding her head, Mela followed the guard into the hall. She watched at a distance as the guard went up to Richard and quietly spoke to him. 
Richard's whole body appeared to just slump as his guard friend put his hand on Richard's shoulder. Richard nodded as the guard said something, and the two of them hurried down the aisle and out of the hall. They didn't look twice at Mela as they passed. Thankfully, there was only one other guard in the room. He was guarding the dais to the left of the throne. Mela walked over to him. As she got close, he said, Is that you, Teal? What was that all about? In her right hand, Mela twisted a seal and the poison flowed into a sharp needle that was hidden in her palm. She had a simple plan. She was going to pretend to trip and as the other guard reached out to help her, she would stab the needle into the unprotected palm of his hand. The trouble was that as she tripped, the guard didn't move to help. Mela was so surprised that she almost stabbed herself as she stumbled to the floor at the feet of the guard. Oof! <sighs> she let out as she landed on her knees. Honestly, Teal, I don't know how you continue to be a guard. You are slow and clumsy. The guard's voice was full of disdain. You can only lead Tim on for so long. Eventually you're going to have to get together with him or he'll kick you out of the guards for being incompetent. Mela thought back to the long march that Teal made every day to fulfill her dream of being a guard. Mela was certain the dedication, the fortitude and the honour in Teal's small frame was greater than anything this guard could dream of achieving. Reaching up, Mela grabbed the guard's leg, sliding the needle through the soft leather behind his knee and into his skin. Ow! The guard replied, as Mela used his leg to help her get her balance and stand. Sorry. Mela held up her arm at hand. Must be a sharp metal edge on these gauntlets. I swear I will personally have Tim remove you from duty, Teal. The guard growled as he rubbed his leg. The poison took as much as two minutes to work, so she turned and walked over to the other side of the dais to guard. Hey, I asked what happened with Richard. Mela didn't reply. The guard marched over, anger evident in every one of his pounding footsteps. Answer me. Whispering again, Mela replied. It is none of your business. None of my business? The guard held up his gauntleted hand as if to strike Mela and added, How about I make it my business? As Mela considered how best to reply, the guard stumbled and then fell in a heap, the clang of his armour absorbed by the lush vegetation all around. Undisturbed in the guild hall, Mela couldn't quite believe it. All she had to do was find the secret passage to the guildmaster's quarters and her mission would be complete. But could she find the passage in time?